Hello, I'm Derek Walker, the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church. Welcome to God Day. And today I thought we would take a look at one of the most important events in the Bible, uh, the story, the true story of Noah's flood. And it's very relevant for us today because Jesus said that the, the days before his coming would be as in the days of Noah. And, and so we're going to see some wonderful um, uh, picture uh, for us of salvation and also of God's judgment. Um, let's start with uh, what Jesus had to say uh, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 to 39. And notice that Jesus confirmed that the Genesis story of Noah's flood was tr is true, historically true. He said, but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For, as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So this tells us that this is a true story. God really did send this worldwide judgment of a great flood on the whole world world on this godless on a godless world and it destroyed them all but God, at the same time God provided salvation through the ark through Noah's ark for all who believed in him um, and Jesus used this picture of Noah's flood to describe and to warn of a future judgment that's going to come upon all mankind um, and in the same way as in the days of Noah, it will suddenly come upon the human race uh, as they go about their godless lives. And so it, just as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm coming, and when I come, he, I'm going to initiate a worldwide judgment that can be compared to Noah's flood. And so we need to take his, his warning seriously. And so... At the same time, Jesus predicted that he will provide a rescue for the true believers. Uh, just as in Noah's day, God provided the ark of salvation um, for those who believed. And so this is a picture of judgment, but it's also a picture of salvation. And um, there, there's a lot we can learn from, from the picture of Noah's flood. First of all, Life on earth before the flood will be like life on earth just before his coming to judge the world. And uh, it says uh, in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying and giving marriage and so forth. And, and so life will be similar. Now, what we know from that expression is that in a sense, normal life will be going on. Uh, in other words, this judgment could happen suddenly at any time. God won't give any particular warning about it. Normal life will be going on, uh, but the implication is the world was godless. It was just consumed with materialistic things, very much like our world today. Uh, when you look at the, the time uh, leading up to the flood, there was actually a population explosion. And it's interesting right now, we've just crossed 8 billion people on the earth. There's been a population explosion for the last 100, 150 years. Uh, and that's just as in the days of Noah. Um, also, when we look at the description of life before Noah's flood, there was great violence and evil covering the earth. And again, we see that violence and evil covering the, the world now as, as never before. And so we can honestly say that we are living in those times that, that are like the days of, old, the, the, the days of old. And it also uh, describes um, occultism happening. And I won't go into the detail of it. And, and a great deal of sexual immorality in, in those days of Noah. And likewise, we see the same thing now. Now, so the first comparison is the sin of mankind. Godless, violent, sexual immorality. These were the char characteristics of the days of Noah. And that's the characteristics of today. In other words, just as they were ripe for judgment, so our world is ripe for judgment 
today. And just think of the, uh, you know, the mass murder that goes on, um, of, particularly of, of the, the very young. Well, just as Noah, as the flood suddenly came upon the people in Noah's time, taking them completely by surprise and overtaking them, so the worldwide judgments initiated by the Lord's coming are going to happen suddenly. They'll be taken completely by surprise. And so this is God telling us, yes, the same thing's going to happen again. There's going to be another worldwide judgment, but God is also going to provide salvation for those who are in the ark. And, and so let's have, a, let's have a look at that salvation that he's talking about. Noah and his family were saved because they, they believed. They were the minority in a godless world, but, but they believed. God provided an ark of salvation for them, and that ark is a picture of Jesus Christ. He is our ark of salvation, praise God. And if you are in Christ, if you receive Christ, you're put in Christ, and now you are in, in that place of safety, so that when the judgment falls, it won't fall on you. It will fall on the ark instead. Jesus takes the judgment for you in your place. Praise God. And so you can, uh, it says in Hebrews chapter eleven seventeen. By faith Noah, warned of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house by which he condemned the world. And so notice this is an ark of salvation. And there was plenty of room to save thousands of people, but in the end, only eight people actually believed. But he condemned the world because he was, Noah was witnessing to the world. It, 100 years, 120 years he took building that ark. That's when God started to warn him, 120 years before. And you can imagine, you know, people saying to Noah, what on earth are you doing? And God, and, and Noah would get the gospel, get the good news and the warning of judgment to his whole world. Everyone knew about Noah, you know, and, and he would have said, there's judgment day coming. But if you will trust in the Lord, you can enter into the ark and you'll be saved from the judgment and you'll enter into a new life. And everyone knew the preaching of Noah, but most rejected it, sadly. Um, but he condemned the world because they, he made them guilty because they rejected God's offer of salvation. But he was faithful. Um, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 5 says, God spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. And if God judged in the past this ungodly world, so he will judge uh, the world again. And that is Jesus' promise for ungodliness. In other words, people not even necessarily doing obvious evil things, but they are ungodly, which means they are just ignoring God in their life. They don't pay God any attention at all in their life. They live as if there is no God, even if they might give lip service now and again. And, and that is going to bring judgment on this world. And so God gave the people in Noah's day 120 years of grace before judgment. He gave them an opportunity to repent. That's what God is doing right now. We are witnessing the gospel to the world and, and God is holding back the judgment so that as many people as possible can repent. But one day, as it were, the, the time of grace will end and then the judgment is going to be released upon the earth. And that's the teaching of the Bible. And this was indeed a worldwide flood. But the, the ark is a wonderful picture of our salvation in Christ. Um, because again, God, before uh, he judges, he provides, he always provides a way of salvation. In this case, it was, it was Noah's ark. Um, he prepared this ark. But in the same way, God has prepared a salvation for us. His name is Jesus Christ. Praise God. And, and really for, for thousands of years, 
He gave prophecies. He prepared Israel. He made all the preparations for this ark called Jesus to be born into the earth, to live a perfectly law-abiding life, to die and rise again. And all of this was done over thousands of years that God prepared this ark who was ultimately manifested for our salvation. His name is Jesus. And it's interesting that um, in Gen Genesis uh, 6.14 says that it was made of gopher wood. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Well, wood in the Bible is the symbol of humanity. And so this is God's ark and it's made of wood. And this is talking about the fact that our salvation comes through Jesus, who is a man. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Yes, he's God, but he's also a man. And by becoming a man and identifying with us, he can save us. And so that's what the Word symbolizes, his humanity. But then it says, make rooms in the ark, room for people to be saved. There's plenty of room in Jesus for you to be saved, to be in the ark. And then it says, cover it inside and outside with pitch. Now this is very interesting because this word cover and pitch is the same word. Um, and it's actually the first time this word is in the Bible and it's the same as the word for atonement. Atonement means to be covered, you see. The atonement, which is through blood, actually uh, covers our sins. What that means is that if we are under the blood, the judgment falls on Christ. He took the penalty for our sins. He paid the price with his blood. And if we are under the blood, praise God, we, we, are, we are protected, we are covered from the judgment that would come upon us. And that's what atonement means. And so when it says pitch it with pitch, it's actually um, talking about a picture of atonement. You see, this pitch would have been like a red resin from the trees, not like the tar pitch, but, but this would have been tree resin that was used to waterproof the ark. And so this red substance um, would have been applied all over the ark. And so the ark is Christ, but it's not just Christ, but Christ covered with his blood. And that pitch provided a covering, a waterproofing, so that anyone on the inside, the judgment from the waters couldn't touch them, you see. So Christ, covered by blood, if we accept Christ, we are put into Christ, and now we are covered by his blood. And then the judgment that tries to come upon us that we deserved actually does not come upon us because it's taken by our covering. It's taken by the blood of Christ. And so if we're in the ark, we are safe from judgment. If you're outside the ark, however good a swimmer you are, you can't survive because the waters of God's judgment are going to swallow you up. And so this is a wonderful picture of our atonement. And this is what Noah preached, the gospel. He says, you can be saved from this judgment if you put your trust in God's provision, in his ark of salvation. You'll come under the covering of that ark. And it's a picture of Jesus. The word for ark also means treasure chest. So it's, it's really where God puts his valuables. So all God's valuables are in his ark of salvation are in Christ. Praise God, if you're in Christ, see yourself as being in God's ark, his treasure chest. And notice again that the ark was the only means for saving the human race. In other words, there was no other ship put on, there was no other way that anyone could be saved. There was only one way you could be saved in Noah's day, and that's by getting in the ark. And, and therefore, this is a picture that there is only one Savior, Jesus Christ. There is salvation in no one else. Um, and another interesting fact, in Genesis 6.16, it says that the ark only had one door. It says, you shall set the door of the ark in its side. Just the one door. And there's only one way into the ark, and that's through faith. 
faith in Jesus Christ, trusting in Jesus Christ. That's the only door into God's ark. Uh, trusting in your works is not going to get you in. You have to put all your trust in Jesus Christ and his atonement for you. And, and as I said, don't care how strong you are, how good a swimmer you are, you can't save yourself. You have to trust in Christ and enter through the door. Jesus said, I'm the door. Enter through that door into the ark. And entrance is voluntary. Nobody was forced into the ark. Nobody got into the ark because they were born in the right kind of family. Entrance was free. There was no ticket price at the entrance. Anyone could enter the ark as a free gift, but they, they had to choose to do it. Um, and so, so is our salvation. You don't just accidentally get saved. You have to choose to enter the ark and put your trust in Christ. But it, God offers it as a free gift. So it's a wonderful picture of salvation. And uh, the offer is given through the preaching of the gospel. Je Noah gave the offer to everyone who came to see him. He told them this offer of salvation. And so in the same way, when we preach Christ, we are offering salvation to everyone. Praise God. I think this picture of Noah's Ark is a great way to share the gospel with children. Um, praise God. Now, when true believers hear the gospel, they, they obey the message and they enter into, into the ark. And so that's what happened with Noah and his family. And in Genesis 7, 1, the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark, you and all your household. Notice where God is, God is in the ark, because he says, come into the ark. So the gospel is God who in Christ inviting you to come to him, to come into the ark. And therefore in the ark is the place of being in the presence of God. When you accept Christ, you come into the presence of God, into the blessing of God. God is in the ark. And uh, then of course, in Genesis 7, it talks about how the waters of the deep were opened up, great floods from under the earth, and the rain, 40 days, 40 nights, and they, Noah's family entered the ark. And then it says that the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut him in. I thank God for that too. Praise God. God closed the door, and they were now secure in the ark. And if you're in Christ, you're secure in Christ, uh, okay? The Lord shuts you in. The Lord seals you into Christ. And, and you just, just keep your trust in Christ and don't turn away from him. But the Lord, you know, the Lord seals you into Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, and then it says that every person was destroyed who wasn't in the ark. The judgment of God will come on the whole human race. And only Noah and those were who were with him in the ark remained alive. Um, so that's the God's warning to the human race. Now 1 Peter uh, verse chapter 3 comments on this. He says, um, verse 20, when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, you see 120 years, that's God's long suffering. Uh, that God wants to give people time to repent. And then it says, in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water. In other words, this is a picture of salvation. He says, verse 21, there is also an antitype. In other words, the corresponding to the believers being saved in Noah's time, there is a parallel. This is a picture of something. Uh, of our salvation, he says, there is also an antitype which now saves us. So Noah's ark here is a picture of salvation. And then he says, baptism. Now then we think of water baptism, of course, because of the water, but actually it's not. It's that our salvation is through being baptized into Christ. He, the ark, you see, that's how we're saved. Water, actually in the picture, is an instrument of judgment. So this isn't talking about baptism in water. This is talking about our baptism into Christ, our ark of salvation. When you put your trust in Christ, the Holy Spirit baptizes you into Christ. Hallelujah. 
plunges you into Christ so that now you are in Christ and now you are saved. And though the waters of judgment may, may fall, you are saved from that judgment. Hallelujah. And so he goes on to say that it's uh, not the removal of the filth of the flesh. It's not some fleshly thing, but it is the answer of a good conscience toward God. And so in a way, God's, when God examines your life as the judge, you are able to answer with a good conscience toward God and to say, I'm in Christ, my sins are covered, my sins are forgiven, and I have been justified by faith. And therefore, you have an answer in the time of judgment. And your answer is basically Jesus. Jesus has died for me, and I'm trusting under the blood of Jesus. And that's, uh, that gives you that good conscience before God. Not because you're so great, but because you're trusting in Jesus and you're clothed in his righteousness and his blood has taken your sin. Praise God. And he says, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because when Jesus was raised from the dead, God was saying, I have accepted his sacrifice. And now he is my representative. He's the representative of the new creation of mankind. And all, all who trust in him now, are in him and he represents us to God. And that means we're acceptable to God through us being in Christ, praise God. And all of this is described in the picture of Noah's Ark. Notice that the, the punishment, the judgment of the rains and the waters fell upon the ark. The, the believers were inside, they were covered and the ark took the judgment. And in the same way, Jesus took the judgment that we deserved. And in the ark, we are saved. And so those in the ark, they passed through that judgment and they emerged into a new life, uh, into a new earth, as it were, a new life. And so in the same way, when we put our trust in Christ, the Bible says we pass from death to life. and We enter into a new life into a new creation. We are now the people of God and uh, God has a new life and a new future for us. Those who reject the salvation, of course, have to bear the judgment. And so then the next thing that happened was that Noah, God entered into a new covenant with Noah. It's called the Noah, Noah covenant. And um, he promised to never flood the world again, with water as a judgment. So he gave a promise to Noah in this new covenant that there would be no more such judgment. And in the same way, when we are put in Christ, our ark of salvation, we pass from judgment to life and God promises us in the new covenant, made in the blood of Jesus, that we are no longer under the judgment of God. We're no longer under the wrath of God. We're his children now and we are under the grace of God. We're under the blessing of God. We have, the judgment issue has been dealt with. Praise God. We are no, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Praise God. And there's, a, just to finish this off, it, there's a wonderful picture in that God also gave the sign of the rainbow as a picture, as a sign of this new covenant. And the rainbow declared that you're now under the grace of God. The rainbow, all the colors represent the multifaceted grace of God that we are now under in the new covenant. Every blessing of every kind, uh, we are under that rainbow. And um, it's interesting that when John went to heaven in Revelation 4, he saw the throne of God. And what did he see around the throne? Radiating out from the throne was a beautiful rainbow. Hallelujah. And that means we are, that is a throne of grace. For believers, it's a throne of grace. And the rainbow represents the, the fact that judgment's been poured out. So now God is satisfied with that. Uh, and now he is free to bless us with every blessing. And so I'm just going to finish by just reading uh, some verses from Isaiah 54. Because remember, Isaiah 53 is the great prophecy of the atonement of the Messiah. And what's the result of the atonement? 
is a new everlasting covenant. And Isaiah 54 verse 7, For a mere moment I've forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath I have hid my face from you for a moment. He says, but the wrath now has been dealt with. But with everlasting kindness, that means covenant love, I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. You're now redeemed under the blood. And then he says, this is like the waters of Noah to me. He says, this is a, Noah is a picture of our salvation. For as I sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so I've sworn that I will not be angry with you nor rebuke you. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. But my kindness, my covenant love will not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. And he says, you, the anger of God has been dealt with, as in the waters of Noah. And now... In Christ, praise God, I, God says, I will no longer be angry with you or rebuke you. You're no longer under my wrath, praise God. But now you're in a covenant of peace. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are under his mercy. We're under his covenant love. Hallelujah. Uh, and the, what a wonderful picture of salvation. And therefore we can come boldly to the throne of grace, knowing there's no more judgment, but we can receive all the grace that we need, God proclaims it through his rainbow that he is great, great being gracious to us now. So thank God for his salvation. Amen.